And we back. Uh, let's continue. We got a good bit of reading in this one. So. so we start with here last time. Talking about the Almazirs. Here we see historical Somali, like Mali on the other side. <laughs> Commercial enterprise in the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, Indian Ocean, the Straits of Malacca. Somali realm, the port cities, settlements. Trade stations, partners, distant trading partners, routes. So you see our history. They don't teach history like that for us over here. But that one going on both sides of the Atlantic and the Pacific. Calling pirates and shit and getting their way, violating international law and shit. So they say the site of Fort Mose now designated National Historic Landmark, where they're gonna reconstruct everything. After the original site was archaeological dig in the 1900s, so let's see what they say. <laughs> now we gonna look through the magic, right? We we'll look through. The respect of these people. Off the top, they use this picture. And off the top, African. So you see. Remember, what I tell you in the last video, the first thing they're going to do is bring you from a distance, from a thousand miles away. And they find you in America history. It was a multicultural go for it. Mose was a multicultural community of people originated from West and Central Africa. <laughs> so they just give you a big words terms like that. Because they don't do it, they know it's nothing specific that you can touch. It's some way over there. <laughs> is what they should just say. But since they're using terms. They fooling people to make it look like they're saying things, but they ain't really saying that in law. Along with some Native Americans, and they always throw that in the letter for you. Just in case some of y'all start to find out that they, you still coming from Africa, and you've been with other people who they call a Native American. Another ambiguous term because of a child born on this land. He's a native, he native to America. <laughs> it's an ambiguous term, it means anybody. But they create a cartoon version of that, that ain't you, you from Africa, to the, and they cartoon version of you. But it look how they freak them though. When I tell you, look for these Spanish, look in the Spanish history and get some truth out of it. Some of the residents of Mose, like Francisco Menendez, my man right there, <laughs> fought in the 1715 Yamasee War against the English of Carolina. They then fled south to St. Augustine with their Indian allies, <laughs> and some brought the Yamasee wives. So now they're getting with the mix, and now you gotta be mixing the shit. And St. Augustine and people of Mose also interacted with, so now they're about to connect you with the rest of the tribe through the beginning of the story. From Africa, escape the English and go and mix with people who've been here before your ass. <laughs> so they're saying, your land, don't get it twisted. And that's what they're saying, what I was saying. 
throughout this video, we're going to show you the video. So off the top, people who write these don't get that as morals just don't apply to us. Just because our skin dog, you're talking to the wrong one. If you're using these terms, you ain't talking to me about me. But when we write our own history of this event, our, ourself, <laughs> now we talk about us. <laughs> the same event written by us. Because off the top, more said, you see how they put more said to tell you that's how you saying that like, ain't nobody know how to say that English word version of a term because they trying to make sure you don't go look for that yourself and let me see Wikipedia might have taken it out but I, I believe they did explain see the government not flawed You see, Fort Musa. They put Musa by even M U Z A in Arabic for Moses. And of course, my rooms. Moses only down with them. You see, seventeen forty even late could be. Compared to the beginning of the story. Let me see. Mad Dinger born in the Gambia region of Africa, always Gambia. And baptized as Fernando Menendez. And even that ain't as they don't know for for um, for sure. They say about a lot of moles with their name like that. But again, even Moorish Andalusia that became Spanish Andalusia Spain after a long time so you of course you have Moors who what we would consider Sp Spanish in culture and custom and language and tongues that who've been transitioning and Portuguese we can talk about that today They all escape too. And gonna set up their own little cities and kingdoms and shit, right? But the natives. <laughs> As I'm gonna show that, that they ain't say that, they make sure they show you say. You see, predominantly Congos, Carabalis, and Mandinka, which is Mand Inca. Mandy Inca. <laughs> As for investigation, what do you say down here? Timuqua, the Baya, the Chilique, the Costas, the Chassis, and the Chicasa cultural groups and then they got again try to talk about where they come from like they don't do that to nobody else history but yours you got a piece from somewhere else if we in America in 1759 the militia of Fort Morse identified themselves as Fort Fort District African ethnic groups the Mad Inca we already read that, Karabali, the Congo, and the Mina. So they must put the Mina in the other one because they know that's Brazil. And you know, all the somewhere in South America. That just a part of Africa for Moors and Fas. We're going to look at that later. And you see, you see, most spoke several languages, so these slaves, but they multilingual and said intelligence, including English, Spanish, and Arabic. 
He also spoke Native American, so which is that don't make no sense. You, you know how many different tongues and dialects been spoken? It was so different. They been speaking the same language and couldn't even understand each other because the dialects that different. Take a look at the language later in the Moors history. <laughs> and just giving you some bones. They're throwing you some bones, you see, but even Arabic. They say, oh, yeah, they've been West African Muslims. That's why. <laughs> they learn English and Spanish and all that shit. And the Native American language and all that, too. They went to the school for Native American the teaching. As well as African language, which is ambiguous to means languages speak, spoken by dark people that they don't know. Some had lived in African cities and many were skilled artisan linguists and farmers. And that's because they talk about Muslims and stuff down there. Because they know they all more shit. But they're going to write that shit first before you figure it out. But good. I like when they write these and put these out because I can read the room. Thanks. <laughs> Like we got how to dress us, don't pay attention to that. It has cap and everything. And that depiction. And they didn't even know about this till 1990. They started researching. And then they write books like this. And we write books like this. And we've been already converted. <laughs> You see him coming out of Chicago or Philadelphia. I always look at the bottom. You see sometimes, a lot of times, they come out wrong. That's why I'm out of Philadelphia, Porter and Courts, Chestnut Street, 1872. And he ran through these little companies so they can make sure he ain't got no more shit through and nothing like that. And they, he got to be reconstructed. They gonna make sure a Jesuit catch that before he get published in these colonies. Right, these the British colonies, so that's where we coming out. Boston, AME, African Methodist, so everything gotta be African. Afro American press. And so Noah Jolly come and correct all this shit. Cause we been losing our mind with this shit been falling under the jurisdiction of Rome like crazy and explain what all that shit really is so you can be able to make proper decisions. <laughs> and reconstructing our own history and that Negro in America. So-called educated ones, huh? <laughs> At Yale and Harvard. When you see the world been denominated like this, and you see, it because of, so for one, we can know where everything at. <laughs> All the fruits and stuff, and all the different products, you know, because we got control of the world trade. And uh, that pink part, that's Africa again, we talk about that. That's Eden, the garden. That's Kush. That's the land of Canaan and Canaanites. <laughs> The inhabitants of Africa. So that's a lot of term Africa. And that beige orange look apart is Mecca. Or the gate. That's what we call it the Northwest Gate. Because it's a gate that block the garden. The middle part. And you see the gate on both sides. That's Morocco. Barbaria to Rome. <laughs> the yellow part on top of that is the Holy Lands. Yeah, I think Jerusalem following that. Both of those, this that the two lines right there, they could just make that one. They can move that line in the middle because all that from one. And they had these names.
because even as Pink Paw, they can move down some and make another line because Al Hen go in southern India and the islands had that same parallel, which will make the Indies on both sides. And at the top, the green is Asia and the blue is the tundra. And that's why we can see things like they call it this, some parts of this place Africa, some parts Asia, some parts India. And you got different books, different authors because they're talking about a damn region, not the whole thing. In certain instances where they'll use one term for the whole thing, but you gotta know how to catch those in the instances. Let me see right here. Productions. Climate, but most importantly, productions. To know where everything made at based off the climate in that area, certain products gonna come from that. And I find this on Facebook, somebody post this. And this is rather interesting. But you see the more bites, which is the Egyptians. And the Canaanites, we see Egyptians, Canaanite, Old Mac Dynasty. Early China, Xi and the Shang Dynasties. Which they got evidence of. <laughs> early seafarers and of course Beijing and all them little city port states boat just like how Carthage and all them sh other Phoenician ports boy we ain't, we ain't stop we ain't stop just cause we we go all over the earth I ain't gonna read all this but it, it makes sense cause we dealing with world empires whenever you dealing with something these terms, especially biblical terms, like even Babylon and stuff like that. You're dealing with the huge pockets of land. Again, in these times, one of these script would have had one name. And that's why you find, you got scientists all the time, archaeologists, they all finding, all these people right here got languages like Ethiopians, yeah, because if an Ethiopian on that side, all across the whole planet, at least on that plane, that, that one culture, a king of that, well, they've been claiming a whole section. The Maria Empire, if you look on Wikipedia and see what that is, it goes straight across. So they're showing you how they think, and you know, North Africa, those kingdoms, we call it Morocco, Tunis, Algiers, and it goes straight across. Even in the south where we at, they call it the Black Belt. It's a section that go laterally across the planet. And they call that one section, the south, dirty south. <laughs> so again, Congo, Angola, all those terms, they just keep trying to put them away because you see that on modern day maps. But we know we can find those same place names even on this side, probably in a different type of language, but over there. And stuff like this, the African presence in Mexico. So they say all these people who dark skinned, they can just go ahead and call them African in Mexico, not a Mexican who been there before that ship and even called Mexico. But, uh, you see, the big dogs, the one who can reconstruct you. These are the people who are going to be the one who credited to write the history books and write and these make the pictures and shit for it. National museums and shit. Of Mexican art. <laughs> so they will give you a lot of, like we've been reading throughout this, a lot of truth distorted. Because <laughs> they can't really blatantly lie because they know most of around who, who take intelligence and knowledge serious and will laugh at their ass <laughs> for their ignorance so they gonna try to fake them but we still see through them 
they still see the ignorance in them. <laughs> but they ain't bought this cop right trying to find this picture back. They ain't that right. They wrong. Don't look like a, a African slave to me. You look like a noble would know what you're doing. <laughs> like the rest of these pictures we've seen. But I glad they put this on it because the United States and these people will take this and and use that for an African article and use that picture. You know, damn where they get that from Mexico Museum. <laughs> so again, you know, these words mean things. And we lost in the sauce because we think it just mean a place in Africa. Because all these people use that. Oh, yeah, it might be from the Congo. Yeah, he from the he from Gambia. Are you from this? <laughs> people in 1986 writing that. Did no research. He just looking at the people complexion, playing games. The picture of Moore's face. <laughs> Probably looking at a map. Which way he'll go? <laughs> at the face on that side. And I showed us because my man was talking about how those Moors in West Africa were quote unquote following Moroccan kings. Yeah, well, even if there's that's them, that's them. See, the hell is the Moroccan kings? By blood. It ain't matter if they distant. Me and my brother in California, we distant. We got a distant, but you know we the same people. <laughs> Just mental states. And just like us over here, different complexion. I just be looking for the darkest ones to show because that's what making them mad. They got a problem with these people. And they quick to try to displace them. And then if they got a lot of complexion, they quick to try to act like they mix with somebody by some reason, dealing with slavery. So they playing us. They show you this one. They show you there ain't no different all over the world. You got plenty of different people. But if people know who they are, they're in the same damn family. <laughs> in the same households with different convictions. But these people don't know that about us. We know that about us. But we let them people do all kind of illusions. So, uh, that's from some reading it. Stanley Lane Pool, Moors of Spain. So, you know, we're going to read it and see what it says. Of course, we don't agree with everything, but we're going to see what you say. In ancient times, Africans, or Moors, in general, were called Ethiopians. In medieval times, most Africans were called Moors. We well, got that backwards already because the word more. This is a Latin word, but the, we can look in history and see the word more go way, way far back before that word even exists. Before Ephraquia, or the word that he come from, existed in history timeline. So we got that backwards, but let's continue. In modern times, South Africans were called Negroes or Blacks, translated into English Blacks. And I always gotta let people know that so you will know that so you will know that you still dealing with that today. And man, how much years ago centuries gone by you being called that and call yourself that. The Ethiopians were named by the Greeks. The word Ethiopia means bare face with the Greek names Ethios plus face and I look into this too and a lot of that ain't really accurate you know we were told that a lot that's what I mean I come from the Greeks and I tell you I go behind everything and check these people and I seen other things from the term and again the Greeks who you mean by the Greeks 
because I know who that is too. The description referred to the dark complexion of these Africans, Moors, which the Greeks attributed to sunburn. So people in the area that we call Greek getting denationalized by calling them Africans because if they there, them the Moors who been there who us the Greeks. <laughs> So that's an a older version of using that term. Again, Moors ain't got no problem with the term, the people, the land, because it's just a piece of land and a name of a land, just like Chicago is a, a piece of land where it got a name that call, we call Chicago, just a word. But the spell behind it is nefarious as hell. Even just in this one paragraph, I can't even get through it because looking at that, like, the way he's talking, it was the Greeks attribute to Sandburn. In the literature on Africa, Africans are commonly identified in two groups, one progressive, the other backward. The progressive people are called Hamites, which is because of biblical um, English. They know that's a, a family, a nation. Kushites, historical, Moors, historical, etc. Anything that connect us up with, for the intelligent people who can read and write, etc. Whereas the backwards one are called Negroes, blacks, because that don't mean nothing. So, just like now, if you call yourself a uh, rock, how are people gonna look at you? That's how people were looking at them back then, calling yourself that. The word Negro or black comes from the Latin word niger, like I tell you earlier. The N-I-G-G-E-R is just a later Latin version of the same word right here and been used by you intelligently just to talk about a color when you're writing in that type of English. For the, use, for the usage of the word black, you don't use this, this, these five letters. You use this with two G's at that time to talk about the, the color black <laughs> objectively you see uncapitalized like it's supposed to be capitalized nouns and we turn it more to adjective when we want to use it as an adjective, which will be describing us, what kind of stock we is. We have to stock up the more, so we say Moorish. What's with our bloodline? The bloodline of the Moors, Moorish. <laughs> Moorish bloodline, Moorish stock, whatever you want to call it. Our ancestors are Moors. And we, the Moors from America, so we Moorish Americans. <laughs> That simple. Blood, you sanguineous, Moors. Or Moorish blood. Because I use it as an additive, so I gotta say it now after it. <laughs> Moorish blood, it, my, my subconscious gotta say something after that when I use that term. It's the same term as Moors, I just using it in a certain way. That's why we like, yeah, why people thinking we saying different things when we say, I be saying people say that too, or, oh, they ain't Jews, they Jewish. I say, oh, don't say that, please don't say that to somebody who understand language, because <laughs> you say the same thing. That don't mean something like a Jew, that just means we, they go actually with Jewish what, Jewish songs? <laughs> you just turn a noun to an adjective, that's, that's common in language. But you're still talking about a noun that didn't know a people. You turn a noun to adjective. That word ain't an adjective by itself. You did something, turn that to add, turn a noun to an adjective. You get what I'm saying? It been a noun. It is a noun. <laughs> and always is. Yeah, it was also black. So they're saying all these people, well, we were people we would call black people in the history books and stuff, but these they proper names and terms that they, that they use to donate their nations. And we know more, and I go into this, plenty of videos got 
divine and national origins and meanings that I definitely ain't going through in this video. But they have been inducted into the white race, which is historically and retroactively because white means Lord <laughs> in that English. When they use that, that's what they're using the food because they damn sure ain't no people on earth the color white. <laughs> are no documents or nothing to show any people like Kushites or Hamites or Moors in history who is called white. No nobles, no groups. You might have the Prince of Yasenberg. <laughs> The Prince of Yasenburg ain't put white on her treaties and documents dealing with Moors. He had a nationality and even called himself the Lord of Yasenburg and the people of his subjects been Yasenburgers. <laughs> Whatever the hell they talking about, I ain't got time to do the history for them. But that white shit ain't no more got no a white person, a white man in the United States. A Moor ain't got no, he got no rights that a Moor bound to respect. I can tell you that now. He already lose at the gate, cause that's what I'm more gonna, gonna, gonna tell him. Like, well, who is you though? We gotta know who you is. <laughs> you ain't telling me nothing when you say white. He be like my man. Oh, he said I'm Italian American. Okay, now nah, we we working with something. So the word nigga was manufactured during the Atlantic slave trade. How to put it another way? There are many species of small fish in the ocean. When put into cans, they are sardines. They are no free fish called sardines. So ain't no fish in the ocean called sardines. They only get that name when canned. No free Africans were called Negroes. So no free people on the continent we call Africa were called Negroes. They got that name only after being a slave, and that's what South Carolina 1740 Negro Act was saying. Say, Negro is confined to enslaved Africans, wherever we, how they get enslaved, them the people who we call the Negroes or blacks. And not the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the Egyptians, Hamites, Moors, or Kushites, or Lazars, or anybody who know who they is. <laughs> But they might be dark skinned, so we ain't wanna confuse the people that you might run into one of the people who ain't your boy or your black and get your head crack open. So we're telling you all now in this colony, not these people, but these people. Don't get them twisted because they look alike type shit, what they've been doing. And y'all people ain't out y'all mind, y'all know how to read and write. They shouldn't have to go over the same thing all the time. At some point, we gotta realize some of these people doing this on purpose, and we gotta check their ass at every corner until that solidarity work. Like, hey, according to they say, a fish becomes sardine when a present in the can, and Africans became Negroes when they were put in chains. But most, we already know that what happened to most. They get changed to blacks and Negroes. According to American law, anybody with an African ancestry, however remote, is a Negro. To follow this logic, since the human race originated in Africa, everyone in the world is a Negro. A word so vague, so this does not mean anything at all. So he basically, he don't like the fact that they saying that because he liked the term Africa. But they still right, because ain't no such nation called African. Ain't never been no group of people called African except for what they made. Ain't been no sovereign group of people who can sail around the world and do trees with Denmark. <laughs> who, on that paperwork, we can go back and see that they been calling themselves African. That's late. So he, so he try to use that like, hey, they can't say that because we have free inhabitants of Africa. They say that they say the free inhabitants of Africa. They didn't say Africans. He want them. To, he want that to be a reality. So you know. 
with, with an African ancestry, which is a slave, because they ain't got no real ancestry. You from anywhere on that continent, which is what they 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 know that's what they did to most. They know they give them a ambiguous place far away. So they know if just like a couple of centuries later, they got people who really they are moles out there who really believe that they not get reconstructed and teach their children a couple of generations down and a lot of more run around who know who they is. So I can honestly hold up, hold up, we gotta put stuff on some of these wild men. They acting wild. The ones who don't know who they are acting wild. The ones who got nationality, they civilized. Like, you know, they wealthy and everything. They, they, we, we can't play with them people. But this mob over here, they scalping us and shit <laughs> in the market at night, stealing our shit and all that type of crazy shit. So they, they definitely got no family or no connections or no civilized groups. Because a, a, a family connected ain't going to let one a person out the family run wild in the in the place. Like right now, our family's broken and not written on paper and, not, and connected. So we always shock for all these murders and stuff. But that's somebody's old nephew who they've been letting run wild. <laughs> he ain't never. So, you know, ain't nobody going to go to that family like, hey, you letting your people run wild here and they hurting other people's children. We ain't got that camaraderie like that no more because of lack of connection. And that lack of connection come from being Africans. Everybody looking over there instead of next door <laughs> for their history and their ancestry. And then to the next region and then to the next closest place over a body of water, which would be like Brazil and Venezuela. can skip your people around you and look for other people who is your family but far the way that dream would never mean you could be in your head it's like you've been in our head for generations and we're just going to be wearing our African charms and then saying they will never work and working as in you reuniting with them you ain't going to start like just going to reunite with them you got to reunite with the people in your own household first and then spread off from there that's your assets that you need to be honored. And that's from blood. The New York, New York raised first Negro flag. Illusions. It, just the 68, as you see in this. They being reconstructed by communism. <laughs> Especially in the 60s. They began, they were going to Moscow and all these places to learn about those type of governments. These moves from out these colleges, these HBCUs, they still doing the day. The CCP training them now. And they go right there and be leaders of Black Lives Matter and stuff. They get around these fraternities and training them the same things. And that's an example. Because in New York, New Jersey, a Moorish flag already been raised for these people for the ultimate freedom. And from 1930, from since the time of that flag been raised, they've been expressing that freedom. Ain't been no Jim Crow for these moors back then when it been Jim Crow. It was always pockets of people who had all this ill who been we got newspaper clippings of those events that get catched. The ones that don't get catched, we know happening. But at the same time you still got this going on as propaganda and the continuing. You got to raise a new flag for the black, which don't make no sense. Ain't got nothing to do with history and law and government. It's uh, act, but you know they will have a lot of y your people with it. They all come together and do this. And see the designers of a proposed flag for Black Americans that won their first victory in the campaign for national recognition of the banner. So national recognition, nationality, all that shit been already told to these people thirty something years before the 1968. But they could just ignore that and jump onto some shit that they learned from other foreigners. Who using these signs that they've been taught in the 1930s? A lot of countries use what he did. They never ain't even had flags and national languages and origins and stuff like that. This man been dealing with that. These people's been. If you look at that time during the First World War and stuff like that, Noah Jolie been talking about stuff that they ain't even get on until 1940s. This man, I've been gone, and now they doing them saying little more principles that he give us. We ain't using them. But cold countries using that nationalism 
and right and they fight your boy for that so call Hitler because they say the nationalism is a Nazi it was just about principles in the way see the, the city of New York hosted the flag in, the in front of the city hall and observers of Christmas Addicts Day the Negro American flag the black American so they know they're not using terms like this not as man but say Moorish American you want you want the answer to this Moorish American but they gonna revert right back to Negro American and now the day Afro, Afro American or African American flag on a separate stanchion to the left of the American flag so basically you know, this tale is all it's just to go against Nobu Jolly somebody the masterminders and other people they just uh, we just emotional we see things like Africa and honors and yeah we <laughs> like they're doing you a favor and 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 helping you out looking out for you and I have room and shit they say also partners are the firm that would manufacture the flag they are seeking official recognition for the flag from London City Council but have not received it so far I'm pretty sure they get it after them clans when realize what they've been doing to themselves. Oh yeah, yes. Say so Gleason and Jackson say that they received an estimate two thousand letters from our part of the country as well as from Negro servicemen in Vietnam as the result of a news story from about the flag. And they claim the communication almost without exception, without express for the idea of flag to promote within black Americans a unity of nationality and pride of history and tradition. So they must have bought like a motherfucker and now they gonna come do what a reconstructed version of the shit. The, the designers emphasize that the flag is not tending to foster separatism. We need the pride of a flag for our commodity holidays. So they, they ain't even want y'all to do that. None of that separations of being your own nation, none of that. Even though y'all already done, had a, 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 a great way into that. And they ain't not, and they ain't they ain't even disavow that. They stole on, they just add on extra terms to it and change it to something else that they ain't disavow, which really means they ain't disavow with no draw Lee. They, they never do that because they will be disavowing the truth. And then they dealing with holidays. And so you get your African American, um, Black History Month um, people. They consolidate those stories for you. Let me see. That set to help calm racial unrest by promoting pride in Negroes, Blacks, people who riot and loot to lack pride, they believe. <laughs> I got to talk about you. Ambiguous. Just because you see somebody who's dark skin who might riot or loot, die everybody. They would disrespect these people like that and then lose it. But yeah, lack of nationality, true nationality, not no goddamn Negro American, that was the cause of chaos because you out of order. You, know, you ain't got no order, so you only got chaos that could, kick, that could come out of that. And that's the reason for the chaos. You want to ignore the man who look like you and get the history from the so-called scholars. <laughs> Okay, let's look at some real history for a change. So the boy from Atlanta confessed caught in cargo. We talked about that in the last video. And uh, these place names from like Alende. Well, another thing that we that she did. That I did a couple of that too <laughs> on a lot of these words. Us see the change in the word that's not a good thing to do because that same car and car cargo will come to that same port 
regularly, but the place name of origin where they come from going to change. And when we see the chain, we know it comes from the same place, but the the duke or the lord or whoever over it might have changed the name or whatever, or map, something that changed the name, but that's the same place. And a story, a lot of stories don't take that type of history we looking into, into account. We find a lot of good stuff looking into history like that. Say, and it brought indigo and horses, and that would really help her out to realize now a lot of indigo coming from either India or America, and a lot of stuff that ain't coming from India, coming from America, with this indigo. Say, basically like saying which we can look at two products and and make the delineation. Okay, if this one product coming in from, because they got the same product coming from one place, okay, you loading from a one loading boat dock, and uh, looking at the variety, they help you delineate which east was in the east. Plus, we also know that they touched Brazil before going around the Cape of Good Hope to India if they went that way. But most likely, a lot of them really went that way because they've been at war in the Mediterranean, so they it was safe for a good long route. If them, especially even the Moors who've been on that coast of Andalusia and Portugal. <laughs> The Atlantic Sea's been like home to them. They've been looking at them like seas. And you see a lot of kings, they'll call it the seas of Castillo and stuff like that. So you see the Afghamis say about to fall Malaga, Malaga about to fall in Andalusia. The Afghami family asked Catholics for insurance to move to Alindi in the Berberia in the land of Moors. And that's why I tell you, Morocco is just land of Moors. Sometimes they'll write it as land of Moors. But then I use that, lose that type of definition now and understanding now. So Morocco is just a place in North Africa today. See, if they had travel on the other side of the street, which is more Morocco at the day, they would not have needed a license from the King of Castile to reside. To reside. Both the expelled Muslims and expelled Jews, Moors and Moors <laughs> with different customs, choose this barbaria by land of asylum, being that many those who embarked in Lisbon because as of spring, they, there was regular boats. So they know, they had know which ports to go to to get to America. And you're looking at it like, well, they shouldn't go to Lisbon to get across the street because you going in the up the wrong direction. So why these Moors and Jews who been getting expelled stopping at Lisbon to, to, to set sail? And why they doing it at a Pacific time port that we know as uh, the times that Columbus and every other so-called conquered navigators and I mean uh, conquistadors and discoverers they are using this little time period to take embark and they've been a reason for that because they've been going to call the sea that would take a couple months or weeks and they need to go with So that's why she said in the spring they've been waiting for a time to embark, disembark. So let's go on right there. And she been like from Malaga. Uh, cut a roll across there, they won't even have to ask for Castile for sure, which some probably did most likely. Probably looking at this record like something ain't right. <laughs> they going from Malaga to right here to you to say seal. And the reason they did that because only certain postmen used to set sail out to America and 
they had a connection with somebody with people who to be able to use that port for that migrational process. And the whole process you can read about it is in history books. And we have some documents that the bass captured fish and fishing captured fishing in the fish fisheries of the Berber Sea. <laughs> This is in America. And that's when Castile started in 1477. And that's when she been talking on that show, that show. She been talking to one of her homegirls and like, he been telling her, yeah, just make sure you don't um, mess with Ghanaia. But the yeah, Canary Islands, yours, we were talking about the Caribbean and the Canaries at that time been the Guyanas and on the other side, Nicaragua and the thing. And that been in 1477 on that show, they, hit, they put the date out there, 1477, they didn't start talking about that shit like that. People be knowing what it was. 1480, and that's why they captured the bad ship because they were cleaning it out nationalities and claiming the land. They sorry I not started this shit. 1480, Fernando kidnaps all the caravels, you see? It has seas now, <laughs> which went to the gold mine in Guinea and the ports. And that's what he's saying in these old documents. The date on them say 1480. And he's saying the gold mine Mina, Gadea, and other ports. 1487, surely a caravel that was going anyway in Ali Aliende. And then that's why I actually know that sometimes it's the same if they go into Aliende and it could be anyway over here. So that's why the terms that we use, like we use America to denote the whole continent and the islands, we use one term. So now you've seen that going on. Also Africa, as you know these Christians, Romans. Abu Baya Afagami, safe to move to Alindi in Africa. And that's where she get how is she writing this from all these she using points in these old documents for research real shit real documents that's what he called true and divine documents because he written at the time and he had to have been rewritten the sixth time by men who you don't even know see 1480 Berberia de Alende the Berberia of Alende so you already know he two Berberia see North Africa over there by them the near sea in the far sea of area, which would be the northern parts of South America. Of course, and other things. Let me show you some more Wikipedia, how they sneak the shit in there, sneak the story in there. The expulsion of the Spanish Morisco is the most. Since 1610, increased the Ottoman naval attacks in the Western Mediterranean. So you see the Ottoman men fighting on the side of the Moors. What do you like to always act like? These been Af these been Africans who've been captured by the Spanish and given Spanish name like Menendez and so like. No, these been Moors who've been just speaking Spanish a lot of them. And some of those was. So you see, I was just trying to say you like they don't really lie, they just leave stuff out, give you one side of stories, distort truth. and use certain words for a fix. So naval attacks in the West Mediterranean, especially when young Ahmed I became Sultan. Pedro Alvarez set up an extensive defense engineering program with Italian engineers working in Italy, Spain, and Caribbean. And the same parallel, right? More slow working on the parallel. Those islands and out there, and we're working on that back and forth through both 
Mediterranean, East and West Mediterranean. And they show you right there, one of the engineers and shit. I'm just something, the young something. What a name like Pedro Alvarez, a <laughs> nigga with the young something. Say on seven, on seven June fifteen seventy six, he married Elvira de Mendoza, daughter of Anigo. I don't think I need to read the rest of that. <laughs> That's how I want to show you how they always bring these characters in America some kind of way. Even they got a family member or something, but that's what they try to do. They try to hurry up and get all this shit out and make the connection. Dig type of way they saw before we get to it and really make the connection. They got four kings, four Indian kings. They can't find this book for nothing. They got Amores, a company called Amores. I want to get this text and read them. <laughs> I even really just want to see the, a better picture of this cover. Eh? A typical Moroccan. <laughs> He's a mall for the land of malls. So that's what make him Moroccan. And again, the land of malls is any place Moorish government at. And the gang of malls. <laughs> More books probably did in London. Let's see. Enter that station hall, but he always got something down here. Oh, yeah, J. Hackett, number 190, Piccadilly, London, by Stephen Hazard, Bath, and by all booksellers, newsmen, and hawkers in town and county. Great allowance of shoekeepers and hawkers. <laughs> you see, see, before they get these books, anything else, they gotta go through hands. So by J. Even Evans and Company. But you already know he's English, so the Black Prince. <laughs> he oppressed, but he's a black one. True story. <laughs> Name Bana, an African king's son. An African in quotes because my brother might have been in England longer than he has. In England, London, right? Yeah, who arrived in England in the year 1791. England in 1791, that might have been Albion over there, England over here at that time. And returned to Africa in 1793, which could have been just to the south. You see in Russia, <laughs> got books like this in Russia, they tell these stories, but they will never show you these stories here, because they act like they don't know that you're worldwide in many different situations, but again, I got that translator, that Pope works right off pages, <laughs> so I got this translated, shall we read it, shall we? And pay attention now. Got all the same shit he wants to describe this. He the owner. He got a gang of so-called Negroes with him. <laughs> and he got a slave who he make. I'ma just read him. <laughs> That's why they didn't want you to be a mole, because these days you've been mentally a king. Mentally, he ain't let no, he ain't play with none of these people. See, the honor definitely threw it out, threw it over the edge into the water and tied the ends to iron brackets. After this preparation, the horse said something to the Negroes, the blacks. <laughs> they see, and you know, this the book, these Russians, whoever writing the story, they call it his people who with him in this myth, even if we have myth, it just. Hey, another story about you other than the stuff they feed you in another language so let's see what they say right and um <laughs> basically he using terms like negro and he called him the owner he ain't gonna say it the more 
where the, where other moors or whatever like that. So you know, they end up pick the other moors. I guess that's them back this back there. I don't know. They get it look like they were on the boat. <laughs> Hit the roars. And they look like him too. So we're gonna read the story and see what he's saying by words. Because the Negroes, especially in Russia, they understood that because they still call them the day black Russians and stuff, even though they look just like the so-called white Russians, because they're using that term as mean evil or bad, or the opposite of the good guys. The bad guys, the good guys, white. The bad guys, black. They using those terms like that, and then all the people who still use it like that in different parts of the world, they still use colors and those type of factions, especially if they're at war with a tribe. That's the black tribe. The other tribe will call them the black tribe. They will call them the black tribe. Because <laughs> they ain't talking about complexion. So we, we don't know. And this way, hey, they might not be talking about Negroes as in so-called dark-skinned people, like America, like on this side of the world. I said, don't mean bad. <laughs> it means me <laughs> to them, boy. After this preparation, the whole said something to the Negroes. The horse out of, out of that mole right there. They seized one of the young ones, the shackles from him. So yeah, he was one of them, but who ruined the damn boards. Covered his ears and nostrils, the soft lamp, and tied a heavy stone to his waist. The owner, the mole, ordered the slave to get the best pearl out of the water. The slave barely went down the stairs into the water and divided into and dived into the water. A small circle forming several bubble, bubbles with something you know, hard to collect off this, uh, this page since he's falling up on himself. So, so he can't really collect that much off the word. They're pulling this shit off, this app pulling words off pictures. So you gotta be straight. We can get through some of it. You already got a clear picture of what he's describing. The man. ferocious sharks appear in the still clear water. A shark tamer sat on the bull of the ship and began to beat the drum loudly. So we even had people who tame sharks, you know what I'm saying? A little over a minute passed. The slave emerged from the water and, panting unheavenly, evenly, grabbed the ladder in his right hand. He had a pearl. So you see how most people have been so unintelligent and decadent and wild that they had no knowledge. They only know what somebody tell them. <laughs> So these moors were like gods or different beings to them. And you're gonna imagine they have to take them a long time to break that type of so-called black supremacy mental over themselves, over this. So, and, and again, thanks to television and stuff like that, that helped them break that type of spell. They just have to reverse the spell in order to help they want people to break that type of spell. And, uh, Apparently, you need truth to break the one he got on your ass. He said, the Negroes did not let him rest. He grabbed the pearl and pushed him back into the waters. The slaves fell asleep over the oars. So they, they, they the one who got the oar. And the slave dive and dive again. And every time emerged with a beautiful pearl in hand. The owner took the pearls, weighed them on a small scale made of ivory, and lowered them into a green leather bag. And they give you a description of the owner, right? A green leather bag, the scale. The slave were going diving. The people with the oars. The shocks. The Owner took the pearls, weighed it in a small scale, made of ivory, lowered it into a green leather bag. But then a diver dived, and Negroes, or blacks, and brought the pearl 
uh, well, I guess they mess up on the language. It brought a pearl more beautiful than all the rest. In shape, it looked like a full moon, and in color, it was like a clear morning star. Having handed over the pearl to the Negroes, <laughs> the slave scratched out the top of his arm, and he was dragged into the deck. The face of the slave turned terribly pale. He could not stand on his feet and fell. From his nostrils, blood poured out. Having trembled several times, he calmed down forever. <laughs> the Negroes looked at each other and immediately threw his body into the sea to be eaten by the sharks. The owner was not embarrassed. He just smiled. Somehow, strangely, and immediately took the last pearl brought from the water at the sight of her. So the pearl more precious. To this more than this, to this dude who he just feed to the sharks. You see what he's saying? At a slight of her, he grinned presently and saying she was she would be decoration of the kings. He ordered the Negroes to wear the anchor. So he called it I'm Negro in this book. We ever write this book. And the uh um, Yeah, you see him looking at the pearl. So again, tell them, don't teach your children about no guys that slavery and all that unless you're here to teach the whole truth and not about the truth. Man, you would up for real. <laughs> I'm gonna look, of course, I'm gonna look for the rest of this book. Cause it don't really matter if I says most of the submiss are uh, uh, actual account being told in Russia. I'm something that been told, but it don't matter, we know that's how history been. Even hell, now even hell, them people. A case of 1783 proved that although it was not impossible for blacks to improve their social standing, the process could often yield disappointing results. So you see, trying to go through Rome and better your standing, then you got a country, you got a history, you just got to know where that is and learn that, know thyself. And it'll be outside of Rome, you need them to give you a standing. In the year, in the, that year, Bernardo Ramirez, apparently a well-regarded hydraulic engineer in Guatemala, who had remember the hydraulic engineer in the 1780s, who had distinguished himself in public service, pleaded to the king, you see, to improve his status, because it was well known that somewhere in her past, her Spanish ancestor had mixed with a mulatto woman, emphasizing his royal service. Ramirez begged the king to bestow on him and his descendant Spanish status. So you see, going from Moorish to Spanish because you're trying to survive in a time where the war raging and Rome got the upper hand, so you want to be safe, safe in Rome. And that's what we're doing by agreeing. Because I know a whole lot of these people seen videos out here where I was teaching this shit. And they saying, hey, that's true, but I can't say nothing about that. I gotta just play along so I don't be gay, so I get uh -huh, treat like Jaheim. <laughs> Say, Ramirez begged the king to restore honors on him, favors associated exclusively with this group. He further claimed that despite the fact that his family had lost the path to whiteness, quote unquote, the system they cast us afforded those of black ancestry who kept mixing with whites the possibility of blood mending. So you see how they've been doing most like you can come you can come Spanish. <laughs> Just by complexion, even though all that been illusions because we deal with national origins, not complexions, but it been a way for them but to run their colony and to keep the people enslaved and shit. But turn it into a complexion thing. 
And then you got the, again, the lighter skin ones and the darker skin ones can be at war. Because one would think they better than the other one. Give, they would give Ramirez honors by his people. Some of them darker <laughs> gonna still get treated a certain way. And then they go, they go treat him a certain way because he using that against them and shit like that. The sad with maintaining a racial body in the end, the king did not consider Ramirez a social position occupation sufficiently found to make him legally white. You see, they've been using that right there in Guatemala. And they started using that late in the United States because at the founding, all that been dying away where they've been using terms like people and their national names. <laughs> and they make clear a free white person just in case the government wanted to use free white person, you're going to use it and they're going to mean national <laughs> from these places. It ain't got nothing to do with complexion. It does not mean Caucasian race, <laughs> like you say in that. Say, knowing that granting such a petition would be detrimental to those who were patently Spanish or who has otherwise distinguished themselves in the Americas. So, most had to become Spanish for the foot and wrong. Just like we take on any name they give us to fit in. Early migration to America, we got Godez. They say, for all distant voyages, we got. God there was adapted by the navigation of the sea, who boundless expense seemed to dare the hardy eventual discovery of what lay beyond, which would be Alan Murray used to always use that term. And uh, the support in the note, because Cadet is one of those ports, and you can go trace the products and the tariffs, the history, and you'll be reading a lot of American stuff with Cadiz over there. Possibly for reason of climate settlements of escaped slave called Colombos and Palenques. So remember that these terms they call in Moorish Americans, tribes and places Colombos, Quilombos and Palenques. And they're using Quilombos because I'm an American navigator <laughs> who had not a sail. Remember the Columbus, with the Columbus has been the title for in Spain for discoverers that they use. This is just an older American version, basically again. We over here speaking Spanish before forty before Spain became Spain. <laughs> so in Spanish he's up and know he say and palenques. And I think they use this term as for palaquins because um, the palaquin been the stuff that the indigenous people used to pick them up and say hey where you want to go that'll be eight canaries sir <laughs> eight canary coins were much more frequent in Latin America than in the United States and even frequent in the United States too <laughs> the war went up here too Another aspect worth investigating is the complex relations that existed between the Columbos or the Palenques and the slave society from which they had escaped. And that because you're trying to investigate shit that ain't got to do with you and your people. Well, I know who write this, but I get this from Wikipedia. <laughs> I assume the foreign nationals from different, with different so-called races or whatever. Cause they don't ever be saying we. They always speaking to them and they. But they don't never show nothing like this and break nothing like this down. We see the Moors who fought the killer with Kashyyyk, the king. They are executors. So if that's the king, and these the executors, and they got different Kashyyyk ways, and they crown on this one. And he worked for the king. 
you can see what's going on. You can see that kings pledge allegiance to empress. You got multiple kings in kingdoms that pledge allegiance to you that make you emperor of an empire. <laughs> More than one kingdom makes an empire. It don't be kingdoms. Unless those kingdoms ain't united, then it'd be like the United Kingdoms. <laughs> and then if we unite as one thing, it becomes the empire of thing because all those just like the United States, all the governors in the states under the pledge leads to the federal the president. <laughs> and uh, you can see a more so the emperor sending to go deal with that business. <laughs> go make sure those people over there got that tax. Or oh, he ain't got the tax, he paid too much, replace him with another one of their people, his cousin. <laughs> That's Basically, you can find in any empire history, you can find executors, kings, emperors, ministers, those type of things. So they got a movie, they're making movies about it in South America, the Columbos. You see the point back there, hay braided and everything like I saw up here. They probably gave you more truth in these movies right here than we were getting in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm going to look for us and see if we can get some some scenes from it. So let's see. After this, we're going to stop and get to other stuff in the next one. Among the travelers who passed through the square, the delegation of Western vassals of Hamete stands out, who in 1583 appeared in Lisbon. Representatives of the opposition went in search of Muli Shekwe and his uncle, Muli Nakar Nazar. So you already see Moors from the West, who vassals of the Sharif. He the emperor, so you got kings and shakashiks and stuff over here, which is his vassals, as ambassadors and represent representatives. And he, um, they got you got two groups, you got two groups going to, you got one group who with Hamete. And one group was going to bring Muli Shekwe and his uncle back to offer the throne. And form that the princess were received by the Cardinal King D. Enrique in Rome. <laughs> so you see when you're dealing with business, all that black and white and slave and all that shit go out the window. And you know who you was. But they promised that they would could leave the kingdom when they feel like it. With no intention of respecting the word of his predecessor, since the highnesses Isabel and not Isabel and thing, uh, who have been Manuel and Enrique, when they talk about the Spanish crown and the Portuguese crown, which been united at this time under the Habsburg. It's the, that's what you mean, the highnesses were the antidote which prevented the untimely resurrection of Don Sebastian. You know, they're talking about Muli Shekwe and Muli Nazar, the highnesses, the two princes, who uh, they've been holding hostage. They didn't want to leave, even though they can't really hold them. They, they didn't want Don Sebastian to show up. And that's what he's most been saying. Yeah, we got Don Sebastian. Because he's he been the rightful heir of the Portuguese crown. 
So he said he allowed the hostages to receive the commissioners, but in the prison of a trusted informer who was fluent in Arabic. So he was trying to spy on these boys. And he was staying out of the interview. Muli's, which is the Sheikh Way and the Tsar, so they meet them in Lisbon at the time. Muli and the Ponientos, Ponientales, and that's what the record book said, how she put them in courts, because she finding documents saying, hold up, we got Mosul, the Mosul, all these different parts of the world, got they got certain names that they, they using as designation for each other. And these ambassadors of the Muli's, they've been calling Ponientos, which is the Westerners, say understood each other in jargon. So you see these Muli's and shit, they know how to speak in the Spanish and the shit, and the Portuguese, the darn, so back, I mean, King Enrique and them. But when they get around each other, they start speaking a language that even the dude who they had in there who were from the Arabic can understand. Uh, and what she been saying is that's these same languages over here that they call it like the Mayan and <laughs> the Aztec and shit like that. Because it's a different form of Arabic Latin. It's a different dialect that she said, that these Moolies must be from over there and these Pony Antilles because they got these little languages that we don't know on this side. Even the Moors who've been speaking Arabic and on that side, they had languages outside that so they could speak amongst each other, the Western Moors. And it's these same languages they got hidden all around the continent. They call it Native American tongues. <laughs> That's these Moors tongues who've been different versions of this shit. That's our haven called Morabeo. <laughs> she called it Morabeo. So we'll start right there. And in this chapter. Peace till next time.